Now that we've learned how to define multi-cycle properties, you can imagine circumstances under which you want to cancel evaluation. So for example, if you have a bus transfer underway and then the reset occurs, you're no longer expecting that bus transfer to complete successfully because you've just reset it. So therefore we need a way of communicating this to the tool. So what we can do is use this disable IFF clause that we've seen before. Now one thing to be aware of with this is that it's completely asynchronous. Inside of these brackets here, which are mandatory, we put some expression which is evaluated to a Boolean true or false, any expression we wish. And any cycle under which that Boolean expression becomes true, then the whole concurrent assertion gets cancelled. So it's not required to pass anymore. So the behaviour is asynchronous, so if we want asynchronous behaviour, this is what we use. As you can imagine, it would be painful having to write disable IFF if you always had the same condition under which you disabled. So just as with default clocks that we've seen before, you can have a disable, which is a default. And we do this using the keyword trio, default, disable, and IFF, and then we put the expression in parentheses. So just like the default clock, this only applies to the scope that it's within. It doesn't apply to the whole design at all. So if I had that default disable RSTN, this property is still going to be disabled by the CLR1 signal. However, if we deleted this, the default disable is now being used for this property because it does not have an explicit one. So I'll just put the explicit disable back for the time being. So let's take a look at how this behaves when we run this in the Cadence Simulator Excelium. So notice we're sampling at the pos edge clock. So we're sampling A true there. And you can see this transaction showing the we've started evaluation of this assertion. But at this point here, that signal CLR1 is true. So notice, although the property says at pos edge clock, the disable IFF has nothing to do with the clock at all. Any cycle at which CLR1 is high, namely where the cursor is at right now, the evaluation of the entire concurrent assertion is disabled. So although we had A, B, C, D, that didn't count as a pass. For these other occurrences of A, B, C, D, notice because we haven't had CLR1 being the value 1, these end up being finished, i.e. they passed. So where this may be particularly problematic in simulation is if this glitch on CLR1 occurs during some delta cycle, i.e. it goes to 1 and back to 0 at the same simulation time, that will still cancel the entire concurrent assertion until the next time A occurs at a pos edge clock again. So the question is, what can we do then if we want to evaluate things synchronously and not asynchronously? Well, we can use two different operators called sync, and then there's reject and then accept. So an example of the sync accept on is shown here. So notice we don't have a disable IFF clause inside of this. It wouldn't really make sense to do that. So what we're saying here is if A occurs at a pos edge clock, then we're requiring the sequence B, C, D to occur or the assertion fails, unless CLR2 occurs. So this is the name here of this operator, sync accept on, and then we put some expression in there. So CLR2 is the expression I'm putting inside of there right now. So if CLR2 occurs while I'm checking for this sequence BCD, then that property will be deemed to have passed, even though I may not have observed BCDE. There's also a complementary sync reject on. So if CLR2 occurs during the sequence BCD, then the property is deemed to have failed. So we can choose which one we use. So the sync accept on or sync reject on are evaluated on a property basis. So this means we can have more than one occurrence of this inside of a property. And indeed, we can have more than one implication operator, but that is getting too complicated for this course. Remember with the disable IFF, that's evaluated in complete isolation from the rest of it. So it's not evaluated every pos edge clock. It's evaluated any time CLR1 changes value. CLR2 in this one as well will only be evaluated at the pos edge of clock because it's synchronous, synchronous to the property clock. So let's take a look at what simulation results we get with these. So the first evaluation of sync accept and sync reject on, notice that the properties are the same. The only difference is which operator we use here. So we have A sampled high there, B, C, D, during the evaluation of that, CLR2, which is what these are going to be rejected or accepted upon, is zero. Therefore, the property passes as expected both behave the same. If we were to move to the next evaluation here, we have A, B, C. Notice there's no D here. 
So if we didn't have the sync accept or sync reject on, then the property would fail at this cycle shown here, 155 nanoseconds. However, CL2 is sampled high at 145 nanoseconds. So for the one that's a reject, that causes a failure to occur. That's so saying sync reject on means I should not observe CLR2 during the evaluation BCDE. For the sync accept on, notice here if we were to look at a different kind of trace. So this is what's called a state of the property, and this is a transaction. The transaction shows you when evaluation starts and finishes. The state shows you the state of the property at any given moment in time, or the most important state. So notice this property goes from active to the sync accept we're talking about here. So active at 125 nanoseconds. And as soon as CLR2 is sampled, it becomes inactive. And the property gives neither a pass nor fail result. So what you have to remember with these things is it's a philosophical argument. What the tool we're looking at now is Cadence Simulator Excelium. We're not looking at Jasper Gold. Jasper Gold's a formal tool. An informal absence of a counterexample is a pass. So if it's not a fail, then it must be a pass. In simulation, things are different because you might be using these metrics as coverage. So if you can imagine how does the tool deal with this, if you have sync accept on CLR2 all the time, what would you want to see? Would you want to see every single pause edge clock that reported has passed? So it's a kind of philosophical argument. So the tool does not show that as a pass. And indeed, if we were to go back to this example of the disable IFF, the, the asynchronous one, so if I just zoom out for a moment, and we go back to here where we had this asynchronous clear occurring. There's a different column for this in something called the assertion browser. So if you go Windows, New, and then assertion browser, this shows you, and, and you punch this button in here, this shows you all properties in all scopes. And because it's only an example, we don't see a huge number of them here. And the cursor needs to be at the end of simulation time to see the total result for the sim. So we press that thing there to do that. And notice there's a separate column for disabled. Okay. So we'll, that's disable IFF. So the disable IFF is a way of making sure the property doesn't fail. Therefore, there is no counterexample. So you could philosophically argue whether that's actually a pass or whether it's just absence of counterexample. So that's why different columns provided here. So many of these things are philosophical arguments. Re the reject is more clear cut because if the reject condition occurs, what you're explicitly saying is the property must fail. Okay, so be wary of this. There are different things you can set up in the tool and only you will know the right answer. So my advice would be for simulation, don't rely too much on the implied coverage because it might not be stating what you wish. In formal, you don't really get this problem because it's clear cut. If there is a counterexample, you see it. If you don't see a counterexample, then it passed, it's proven. So we've gone to this final set of stimulus here. A is sampled high there. So for all of these properties, there is this clear one and clear two signal are not high, therefore they all pass at the same time. And their evaluation was from 255 nanoseconds to 285. So to summarize that then, use disable IFF if you want asynchronous behavior. It may be problematic in simulation due to glitches on that signal. If you want synchronous, you have to use sync accept on or sync reject on. There is also a form without the sync on the front, so an asynchronous version of accept on and reject on as well, if you care to look in the LRM at those. Sync accept will pass if the condition, in this case CLR2, is observed during evaluation of this sequence BCDE. And as we said before, the sync reject on, you can have them multiple times in properties. They apply at a property level rather than the entire concurrent assertion, which is what disable IFF does. So you can nest them. You can do all kinds of things with these. Sync reject causes a fail. Sync accept causes a pass if the condition CLR2 is observed.